Good morning, and peace be with you. Um, we all know that uh, today is uh, um, Palm Sunday, and uh, um, um, five days later, and uh, Jesus will be uh, was crucified on the cross. And uh, we call it a Good Friday, right? Why we call it a Good Friday? Because something good happened. Okay. So, um, well, we'll discuss about that later on. But uh, you know, um, I realize that greeting is very important uh, in social life and uh, reflect the importance of the actually important value of each culture. You know, as a, you know, we Chinese, we uh, care a lot about food, right? So in the old days, uh, we uh, greet each other by asking, have you had your breakfast or lunch or, you know, dinner? Right? That's uh, because that's important to us, all right? I'm pretty sure recently uh, you will have the, uh, you know, different greeting all right. In, when we come to U.S., we uh, we we say what's up, bro. What's up, dude? Right. And uh, recently, we noticed some changes. Have you noticed that change, changes? Have you received a vac vaccine yet? That's our greeting now, right? You vaccinated yet? All right, because it's important. All right. But uh, you know that uh, um, in Middle East, okay, we'll know what is most important there: peace. Right. So when they greet with each other, they say what? Shalom, right, means peace. So today we are going to uh, um, discuss the uh, uh, seventh uh, beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew. Okay, so in this famous sermon, in his famous sermon on the mountain, Jesus said, "Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God." So who are the peacemakers, and who, why they are called the children of God? Uh, we will um, start from the uh, um, beginning. So uh, next slide, Hello. Well, uh, I looked up the uh, definition of peace on the internet. So uh, there are two definitions. The first one would be the freedom from disturbance and uh, tranquility. Okay, it's like uh, you don't have any uh, kind of disturbance in you or any turmoil inside. Okay, the other one is the state of period in which there is no war or a war has ended. All right, so. We all know that pretty much nowadays we really don't have peace in the world, right? That there's a war here and there, and there's no uh, like uh, freedom of disturbance. But uh, I want to uh, go back, okay, in the beginning. Okay, we all know that in the beginning God created the heavens and earth, right? And uh, this picture shows that, uh, you know, basically that's uh, um, the kind of the picture of the uh, imaginary um, Garden of Eden. All right, so you can see that you know it is very peaceful there, and you probably noticed that, that the uh, line is with a name, right? So um, when God created the heavens and earth, especially when God created the earth uh, in six days, every day He created, He did His work, and He concluded with, "It is good." All right, so it is good when God created the heavens and earth, and when God created man, He said, "It is very good." Okay, so we are. You know, the creators, God really loved, and he said it is very good. And uh, in the uh, book of Genesis, there's not much uh, kind of a description of how peaceful the uh, garden is. But if we uh, um, kind of a look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, okay, it kind of uh, reflect, you know, the, uh, the peace in the, uh, in the world or in the, um, you know, perfect uh, world. <laughs> it says, the wolf will live with the name. And a leopard will lie with the goat, a calf and a lion, and uh, the yelling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den. And the young children, uh, the young child will put his hands into the viper's nest. There will be neither harm nor destroy. On all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters covers the sea. So in that picture, we know two things. First of all, there is no conflict. Every everybody, the animals, they live peacefully together. Okay. The other one would be the knowledge. Okay. The earth is filled with the knowledge of God. Okay. As water covers the uh, 
carved the sea. So in the beginning, okay, we human, our ancestor Adam and Eve, they know God, and God, of course, know them. Okay, they have perfect relationship. There is no any uh, affliction, any broken relationship with them. So it is perfectly peaceful. Unfortunately, things had changed, right? When the um, Adam and Eve, they uh, choose to obey, uh, actually choose to listen to a lie from the devil, right? The lie was that you are not going to die when you eat that fruit. Right? After that, you know, Adam and Eve uh, broke the relationship with God by because they didn't listen to the God, and then peace has left. Human beings have been in the war. The first world war was uh, between Adam's two sons, right? Cain and Abel, okay? The war was not uh, only the uh, beginning, okay? So um, in the uh, next slide, Hello. in the next thousands of years, okay, um, there are wars on the earth. So. You know, there's another statistic, okay, about the wars. So, has a war had ever been peace? Actually, in the past uh, four, uh, 3,400 uh, 3, years, humans have about at peace for like uh, 268 years, roughly. So, 8% of our life, of the life of the human history, uh, is peaceful. Okay. And at least 108 million people were killed in the wars in the 20th century, last century. An estimate for the total member killed in wars throughout the all human history, it's a pretty uh, large range from 150 million to 1 billion. Okay, so there are a lot of, uh, you know, the wars are, are around us. Nowadays we know that there's uh, wars in the, all over the place, Middle East and the, um, even in the, uh, you know, Myanmar, right? So um, how about the inside? Next slide. So, um, Inside, we also have this kind of so-called inter internal turmoil. So what is a turmoil? It's a just a broad term, okay? Uh, we will see some examples. But since we are living this kind of, uh, you know, unresting world with all of, uh, you know, suffering and afflictions, then the inevitably the surroundings will have impact on us. Okay? As uh, it says in the uh, uh, job, okay, for the thing that I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. I'm not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, but the trouble comes. Right. So we all know that Job, Job is, was a very righteous person, right? But uh, he still faced this kind of uh, impact of his surroundings. Right. So that inevitably caused a lot of uh, you know, trouble in, inside. All right? So there are several exam uh, kind of uh, examples about you know, what is kind of, a, you know, I would say stress or turmoil inside. So um, if you look at the slides, there will be um, like a troubling thoughts keep repeating themselves, okay? It, it, it doesn't go away, all right? If you have a, some thought, it comes and goes, that's not uh, kind of a turmoil. It's just, uh, you know, uh, no big deal. But uh, these kind of uh, uh, troubling thoughts keeps uh, repeating uh, themselves. Uh, coming back to you. Uh, you uh, we'll have some examples, or oh, you, you already have these ex examples there, okay? Um, and it, it feels as if, okay, these souls are in control, okay? Um, you wake up in the middle of light, okay? And somehow a thought comes to you, okay? It, 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 it seems that it, it goes from nowhere, okay? And the, this kind of negative thoughts keeps growing, 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 okay? And uh, like a, uh, dark cloud cover your, you know, your mind, and uh, you try to get rid of it, okay, it's still there, and uh, then just cannot go back to sleep, all right. This, this kind of trouble thought can be your worry about your kids, okay, can be the worry about your job, or can be the worry of your grade, or even the, or some other re or relations, okay. And as a result of feeling is out of control, so your experience and element of fear, all right? Um, so you, because you, you just say, I, I'm not going to think about it, I'm not going to think about it, but it comes back, and uh, you're gonna say, I cannot afford to sleep. If I didn't go to sleep, I cannot work tomorrow. 
I cannot go to school tomorrow. Okay, if I cannot go to school tomorrow, my grade will be uh, low, and what if this, what if that? Okay, then you start to fear. Okay, and then the inner agitation fades off its, itself, and the more you dwell on it. So you see on it, you start to uh, thinking, okay, what caused this? Okay, why I have these worries? Why my, uh, you know, um, my, uh, I worry about the kids when they are uh, uh, outside there um, because they, they don't talk to me because they, I don't know what they are doing, you know, and because, you know, uh, if for also for the relationship, right, you know, you're going to start to, to, to worry this kind of a, a relationship, but then uh, what did I say wrong that I offended her or, you know, um, that's more my, not my fault, that's her fault. So you start to uh, play this kind of blame game, all right, and uh, so it's getting, uh, you know, this kind of uh, internal education just keep feeding on this kind of negative soul, okay? And uh, then you find that, uh, you know, it's a funny way out of this turmoil it seems impossible, okay? And uh, you feel so helpless, all right? And of course, there are secular uh, treatments or kind of suggestions, right, for this kind of uh, turmoil. Well, know that it is called what? Positive thought. Positive thought. You know, you have to thought. You have to think about things in a positive way. All right. You don't have to, don't have to think about things in the uh, negative way. Okay. So what what is a positive way? Okay. You are good. Okay. So whatever happens, okay, you will be fine. Okay. You are in control. Okay. Just wake up. Okay. If you cannot go back to go to sleep, okay, wake up, meditate, and tell yourself, I I'm, I'm good enough. I can do this. I can. You know, even I cannot get uh, s enough sleep, I still can do it. I still can handle my coursework. I still can do my job. Okay, I I'm good. Okay, or you can just uh, you know basically if you're uh, hearing this kind of uh, negative news or you know uh, negative energy, if you have some colleagues right that is kind of give you trouble, you will just say okay, I'll just uh, stay away from it, from him, right? And if there's some um, bad news, or I'll just uh, you know stay away from the bad news, right? And if this kind of uh, WeChat, you know, this kind of group is offending me, I'll just leave the group. Okay, so you ha we have some ways to uh, get away from this uh, turmoil. Okay, but you know, because the surroundings, our environment doesn't change. Okay, so those things will come back. You probably can um, get away from one um, bad colleague. There are plenty of them waiting for you. All right, probably you kind of a. Uh, you know, cover your ears and uh, the, your eyes, don't see the news, but uh, you will know that. It just news just coming out. You cannot avoid, avoid it. So, you know, the question is, why? Why we are in this kind of situation? Why there are wars? And why there are turmoil in, my, in our mind? Uh, Caleb, next night. The reason is that we are at war. Okay? We are at war. Next one. So, you know, who are we against? We are against God. Okay, next one. And uh, th unfortunately, this war we have already lost. Okay, because uh, God is a creator of heavens and earth. Okay, you fight against our God. Well, you already know the uh, consequence. All right, so, and uh, you probably say, well, I didn't really didn't. Uh, fight against the God, you know, I, I, I don't even have a relationship with God. Okay, how come I was uh, uh, an enemy of God or I am at war of God, right? Let's go back to the beginning, okay? So uh, when Adam and Eve, okay, ate that uh, fruit, they really didn't declare the war against God, but they choose the side, okay? They choose the side of devil because the devil say, God told you a lie. And Adam and Eve believe that. So they turn to the God and say, you're lying. Okay? You tricked us. This servant is telling the truth. I'm with them. So we are, when that happened, human beings always cho choose the side. Okay, choose the side of the devil and choose the side to be against God. So in Psalm 197, when Moses 
okay, at the old age, he wrote this psalm saying that, for we are brought to an end by your anger, okay, God's anger, your wrath, by your wrath, we are dismayed. Okay, cause we are, we were, okay, for Christians, we were, if you haven't believed in God yet, you are on the uh, side against God, and God uh, anger is upon his enemy. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So, when we take the uh, side of the devil, all right, and basically, pretty much, the devil is controlling us. We want to do good things. Actually, we are. Uh, we don't even want to do good things, okay? Because our mind is covered by those lies. We'll talk about l more about the lies. And what's waiting for us? Eternal death, right? Because the, s the wage of sin is death. Okay, probably you, you just say, okay, you know, everybody die, all right? So it's no big deal. Well, you say that because you are young, okay? But when we get old, okay, we worry about that. We are scared of death. Death is the biggest enemy of the human being, okay? No matter how rich you are, okay? No matter how powerful you are, you are the, death is the final judgment you're gonna face. Not only the death of your flesh, of the body, but the death of the soul. I think this picture reflects pretty well. It is kind of a, like the uh, picture of the hell. Okay. It says that the fire never quenched in the hell. Okay. All those lost, lost souls, actually the, uh, when, the, um, and when Jesus comes back, okay, the body will be restricted. Our body will be restricted. And we are going to face the judgment of our God. If you are on the wrong side of the battle, of the war, that's what we are going to face, eternal punishment. Okay. But nowadays, when we are living in this world, okay, we will say, okay, yeah, what we can feel in this world is that if this kind of a turmoil, because uh, in the United States, war is far away from us, right? And all these kind of, uh, you know, um, poverty, or uh, other, you know, bad things, uh, persecution, you know, is kind of far away f with us, but we s don't have peace, right? So, how do you get peace from God? How to get a peace? As I said, you know, previously, secular, you know, the, wor the world will give you some ways, okay, to make peace, but it's not gonna work. It's here, how do you get peace? Peace. Actually, the qu the answer is very simple. You just change your side, right? You just uh, change your side from devil side to God side. Next slide, please. So, in this um, um, preach, I'm going to talk about the peacemaker. Okay, we're going to uh, talk about the peace with God and the peace inside with ourselves and peace with people. Next slide. So we were on the uh, wrong side of the uh, of the war. Okay. So if we want the peace, because as a, uh, you know in the um, um, prayer we say that the Jesus actually in the book of Isaiah, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Right? Jesus brings the peace. So we will say, you know, since we are on the uh, we were on the wrong side of the uh, of the war, and if we want to have peace. We want to have peace with God, the Creator and of heaven and earth. What shall we do? Okay, the answer is very simple. We don't have to do anything. Right. Many times when we want to make peace with somebody, you know, especially in, I, I don't know, in the uh, United States or in China, if we want to make peace with somebody or we offend somebody, we want to make peace with him uh, or her, we bring gifts. So we say, I'm sorry, I offend you, right? Um, and it actually, um, Israelites did that, right? So in the Old Testament, 
Okay, they because Israelites they know that they are sinners, they offend God, so they bring sacrifice to God every, actually every day. Okay, so that's why we see in the uh, book of uh, uh, Leviticus and uh, the uh, uh, Deuteronomy, we uh, all know all these kind of sacrifice offered to God. But those sacrifice could not pay what we have done. Okay. As I said, the wedge of sin is death. It's, de it's our life. All right. So when Israelites offers those names or the cows or the ox, okay, that's those animals' life. The animals' life cannot replace the human life. Okay. And also, you know, when we want to pay this, uh, I would say, um, pay off our sins, we need to use somebody's life to pay for it. Okay, not, not even our life. If, if you say, okay, um, like uh, I'm a sinner, so Moses say, okay, I love you so much, I'm going to die for you, so you will be saved. Okay. Uh, it's not going to work that way because uh, Moses is also a sinner, so if he uh, uh, didn't believe in Jesus, he's, uh, you know, he's also you know, doomed. So he couldn't. Okay. So we need somebody. Okay. We need somebody who is, a, uh, who is not a sinner die for us to replace us. So this one, this peacemaker, is Jesus Christ. You know, we celebrate Christmas because we know that our Savior incarnated, okay? He turned himself, he came to earth from heaven to become a human, and then he died on the cross, well, on Good Friday, so that we can be saved. Why? Because he lived a s perfect life, completely obedient life, a life that God is pleased. He's a perfect man. But he died on the cross, used his perfect life to replace, to ransom us from the uh, eternal judgment or from the death. So in the book, in, in the Ephesians uh, 2.8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not your own doing, it is a gift of God. Okay, so in the, uh, these slides, it, said, uh, it says also, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see that there are key words here, the faith, the faith, the faith. So we come to Jesus by faith. We say, we believe that we are sinners. We believe that we are doomed. Actually, actually, it's a fact. And then, there's another fact, is that Jesus, you, come, you came to earth to die on the cross to save us. But if I don't accept this, if I don't accept our Lord Jesus Christ as a savior, I have no portion in Christ. Okay. So the faith is that, okay, I surrender. Okay, I'm going to, you know, we, we were fighting against God, right? You know, usually surrendering is a bad word, right? We don't want to surrender, right? But this, in this case, we surrender, we win. Okay, we keep fighting, we lose. So we just say, God, I surrender. Okay, Jesus, I I just want you to be in control. I want to set, accept you as my Lord. I want to give my life to you so that you can give your life to me so that I wouldn't die, wouldn't face this kind of eternal judgment. Through faith, we are in Jesus. In Jesus, we switch our side. Nowadays, we are... After we switch the side, as I said, we are still in war. Okay, but this war has already won by the Christ. So, you know, when we play games, okay, you know, if, if you keep losing, you lose the interest of playing games, right? But if I tell you, you know, in this, you, even you are in a war, okay, you are in this world, you have, you know, affliction, but you will win. It's different. Right. 
So how to uh, um, experience, experience the peace of God? Okay, so um, first admit you are a sinner, and then turn from that thing, from that thing, okay, and repent for it. I did it wrong, and then ask Jesus Christ to come into your life to be your Savior and Lord. Believe in him and enter the friendship with God. There's an example, okay, the, uh, on the, um, in the Old Testament, okay, so uh, if everybody knows that, okay, Jacob, all right. So we know that uh, Jacob, by name, Jack means grab, okay. Jack has a brother, had a brother, right, his son, okay, his older brother, okay. So do you know what uh, Jacob's career goal before he come to know Christ or come to know God? Jacob's career goal is to take the title of firstborn. That's his career goal. Okay, although he wasn't entitled to be the firstborn because Esau was his uh, big brother, right? He's, uh, he was the second son. But in, uh, in, in, in Israel, if you, have, if you are the firstborn, you take the two portion of the uh, kind of uh, inheritance, right? So Jacob's um, career goal was uh, being the firstborn. So he wasn't born that way, so he needed to use some kind of wisdom tricks, right? So the first trick, what, what was the first trick? He offered some soup, right, to, 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 to his soul when his soul was so thirsty, and say, okay, I can give this, and then you give the title of the firstborn to me, right? So he got the uh, title of firstborn, but he also has to pass through his father, Esau, right? So because Esau is going to bless the uh, Esau as a firstborn, right? So he also tricked Esau, right? He put all the fur around him and then uh, tricked Esau. So his career goal is to get the uh, um, um, title of firstborn, and he got it, right? By cheating on his brother and cheating on his uh, father. And then what did he got? He got nothing. He fled, right? The Bible didn't say he inherited anything from Esau, did he? No, he didn't, because he fled. All right. Then, you know, he uh, basically he he got it, uh, you know, this back by his uh, uncle, right? His uncle tricked him twice, actually, uh, for uh, fourteen years. We all know that story, and he got all, you know, but God, you know, blessed him, and he has a lot of uh, sheep and all the uh, properties there, and he went back to uh, his hometown because uh, he's going to face his brother Esau. At that harbor, at that night, he wrestled, uh, by actually he was wrestling with God right, the whole night. Right? And uh, God touched, in the, in the morning, God touched him and he became the cripple. Basically tells you that, well, you, you know, actually you keep him wrestling with me, actually you uh, you know, you, you, we are not at the same level. It's like, you know, you're playing games, you know, like, uh, you know, tiny level and uh, the other expert level, right? So, but the, the Jacob grabbed the Lord and I say, I wouldn't let you go unless you bless me, uh, uh, bless me, right? So at that moment, Jacob would say, I surrender. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to rest with you anymore. I want to rest in you. That's good. So, you know, if you see other, <coughs> you know, show talk about the, the uh, Jacob, after that, okay, Jacob should be a cripple, okay? If you see anybody uh, play uh, Israel like a uh, normal man, then they didn't read the uh, Bible carefully. Because right? since then, Jacob become the uh, cripple, but uh, he had peace with God. And then he has this kind of peace. And the, in the end, Okay, in the book of Hebrew, um, it says that Jacob worshiped at the uh, last days. Jacob worshiped with, uh, worshiped God with uh, on his staff, and uh, when Jacob was about to die, he asked, you know, Joseph that you have to bury me in the uh, promised land, not in Egypt. Okay, because Jacob knows, okay, God will take the whole nation back to the promised land. So that's why Hebrews said Jacob is justified. He's a righteous person because he has this faith. Okay. 
So, <coughs> next slide, Jeff, uh, Caleb. After we have uh, peace with God and God's life sitting uh, in us, and then we would have a different, um, I would say, the um, feeling or the faith or the way to deal with the turmoil inside of me, inside of us. In the book of Colossians, it says, let the peace of the Christ rule in your heart. Okay. And in the uh, Philippians 4, 7, um, and as, uh, 4, 6, and 7, we all know this uh, word, right? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request to be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Okay. So now let's reflect a little bit why we worry, okay? Why we have this kind of turmoil uh, inside, okay? So first of all, we have this kind of turmoil inside because we don't have the security, okay? We don't know who is in control. We know that uh, we are not in control, that's for sure, because uh, that's, uh, you know, all, th all the people, even the people tell you that you are in control, but we all know that we are not. That's a fact. We are not in control, okay? So important thing is that after we are reconciled with God, okay, we s the, the light is shining upon us, and then we start to be able to tell what is a lie and what is true. Okay, in the, under the kingdom of the evil, because they have no truth, so they just fool you with lies. Okay, this is like in the communist, you know, old days in the communist China, or longer days in the communist uh, North Korea. You know, people, they were so happy, okay, because they were told many lies, okay? They would tell you, you know, you have good life because of whatever, you know, the communist, uh, you know, party has done for you, right? So there are a lot of lies here. But in the, um, you know, they will also tell us a lot of lies, okay? So when we uh, know what is truth and what is lie, then we'll be a different person inside. Okay, so first, security. We're not in control. Okay, the devil tells you you are in control. Okay, and then we know it is a lie. But we know who is in control. Our God is in control. We are in God's hand. Okay, many times, you know, when the, uh, actually when uh, Kevin or Ariana, they are in the outside, you know, we uh, worry a lot so much. Actually, I worry about so, so much. My wife probably worry more. And uh, I woke up in the middle of light. To tell you, I woke up at in the, in the middle of light, and I wondering, you know, I check the map. Nowadays, I don't check the map um, that often, probably once a, a week. But uh, you know, I check the map. Oh, she's in Georgia. Okay. Oh, what 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 what's uh, um, going on there? Or if she's on the highways, the on and so on and so forth. What if something happened and this and that? Okay. And then. I say, well, of course I'm not in control. I cannot do anything, but God's in control. They are in God's hands. They are in God's hands. Okay, God has promised me. Okay, He will pro protect them. Even Lot. Okay, God's grace is in f sufficient for us. Okay, sometimes I worry about myself. Well, you know, I have this kind of hump on here and the hump there, and I have this pain here and there. What if I'm ill? Okay, what if I, uh, you, know, you know, pass away and who is going to, uh, you know, provide for this family? God is in control. God can provide. Okay, then, you know, another thing is just uh, really trouble us is our value. Okay, you know, many times when, you know, we are, you know, uh, scolded by parents or even, you know, uh, you know, scolded or rebuked or, s you know, or offended by our spouse or even by our supervisor, su supervisors, we kind of uh, feel that we are, we are not worthy or, you know, they just look down on us and uh, kind of uh, we are losing our value, our self-esteem. I'm not good enough. It's like uh, at least in the eyes of my parents or in the eyes of, uh, you know, my spouse or in the eyes of my supervisor. Th that's a lie. Okay, because our value is not based on them, on other people's 
judgment. Our value is in Christ. Okay, because this Bible says that nobody can okay judge you. Okay, nobody can say you you are not worthy. Okay, because Jesus has died for you and you are justified by His blood. Okay, we are so precious in God's hands, and the freedom. You know we are we are free and we are not free. Okay, we are bonded by a lot of uh, um, things in our mind: bitterness, relationship, hatred, uh, hate, and other things. All right, and uh, um, a lot of things you know um, happened before or in our childhood, kind of uh, have this kind of impact on us. We even hold a lot of things against our uh, closest uh, friends or closest. Uh, or even uh, our wife and uh, husband. Okay, S I'm pretty sure you woke up someday <laughs> in the middle of light, and then you know what he said is wrong, or what he did is wrong. I really cannot forgive him. Okay, he did what I hated the most. Right. So, or you have a you know colleague or friend and offended you, and then you say you know I can never. I never forgive him. You know, I just despise him when I even look at him. Okay, this kind of this kind of feeling just. You also, you know, we are bonded with other our own sins. Okay, we are addicted to many things. Right, so how are we getting away with it? You know, we're addicted to the internet. We're di addicted addicted to pornography. We're addicted to uh, you know even you know not. Um, I guess much here, but uh, drugs. Okay. So um, we are so unworthy, okay, because I I, I I am so addictive to this kind of thing. What I'm going to do? You know the way we are. You know we don't want to admit we did something wrong because we are afraid of facing the uh, punishment. Right, because uh, we, you know, for the, uh, you know, my kids, they defend themselves. First of all, they defend themselves for their value because they feel like that if they don't defend, you know, their value will be down. Um, and they they defend themselves because they're afraid of a puni punishment. But uh, in Christ, we don't have to uh, be afraid of this, right? Because. Uh, we repent, we come to Jesus say, what I did was wrong, and we are not going to get a punishment because Jesus already took the punishment for us. As we come to uh, the Lord and say, hey, well, I did this, our value is not going to be less in Christ because Jesus has already died for us. He died for us. He gave his life for us. So we are not, we are not afraid to admit that we are weak, we cannot do this. But the next step is very, very important. You have to say, you have to be willing to give yourself to Christ. Say, I cannot do this, but Jesus, you can. Just take charge, take control of me. I surrender. Okay. You know, I like the, the, the word actually, let it go. Okay, you know, cause uh, let it go of ourselves is very, very important in seeking peace in Christ. If you keep holding yourself, okay, me, 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 okay, you just want to have peace by your own effort. You're not going to have peace in by doing this, by doing that, because we are not in control. We're not the uh, creator of the heaven and earth. We're not, you know, like uh, you know, I cannot even control my hair turning white or turning gray. So I cannot do anything. But as we come to Christ, and nothing is that uh, when we come to Christ, we have hope. Okay, because uh, when we worry, we always want to think about the end, right? What do I worry about? We're afraid of the end of this issue. Okay. What I ha what if this? What if that? Okay, 
But the Jesus said this very, very simple request. In the end, when Jesus comes, okay, we'll be with him. We have the, the heritage in heaven. Okay. I want to uh, share with you the um, um, book of Revelation, right? This, uh, this, uh, I guess this is a very, uh, you know, kind of a very encouraging uh, verses, right? 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the uh, water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of Nain down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side, the river stood the trees of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, bearing the fruits every month, and the leaves of the tree are for healing of the nation. No longer there will be curse. The throne of God and the name will be in the city, and his servant will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their forehead. There will, not, there will be no more night. They will no longer need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. Okay. So, <coughs> you know, in the uh, Garden of Eden, there are one tree. God also said you cannot going to eat it, the tree of life, right? And the, the uh, cause, uh, um, but in, the, uh, in heaven, the tree of life is free for us. Okay, so this is the uh, this is a hope. Probably don't uh, you know you uh, you just say okay, it is far away. You know, uh, I want to share um, something with you about the uh, you know as we are getting old and was as we are facing the death. Okay, so um, as we are getting old, our parents are of course are getting older. All right, and uh, many of them uh, has passed away, and we all start to have friends, okay, that uh, um, start to have, you know, they have cancer and they pass away. So I had a friend, um, you know, he had this, um, you know, he uh, lung cancer, all right, and uh, um, he uh, um, after he was diagnosed with lung cancer, he was basically just, you know, um, almost collapsed. Because uh, he is uh, like uh, you know he's forties he's on the you know basically on the right track of his career he is a professor in the university right and he make it of course he's a uh, um, you know he he, he just accepted Jesus um, a couple months ago <laughs> okay and then he was diagnosed as cancer so this this is a very it was a very hard si situation and I'm pretty sure he has you know he is, was struggling a lot okay and then. Um, he uh, shared with us, and uh, then the, uh, um, actually that was the um, um, the psalm and uh, uh, that comforted him, and uh, um, and also um, of course the Holy Spirit um, tell him that uh, the what his uh, end. Okay, so he decided that uh, he's not going to uh, stay in the United States. He wants to go back to China. Okay, not because China has better uh, medical, uh, you know, or the treatment there. He just want to go back to China to tell the good story, to spread the gospel. Okay, the here at the uh, United States, the uh, the doctor told him that you have three months to live. Okay, three months, three months, and he went on went to several uh, kind of chemotherapy here, and uh, then uh, we just uh, saw his uh, basically the hair, you know, falling, and then the. Uh, you know, it's getting a week and a week, but uh, he uh, um, moved back to China, and uh, then he uh, actually he lived three years after he moved back to China, and uh, um, he take uh, he spread the gospel in the hospital, and he has uh, bear a lot of fruit, okay, and uh, and of course eventually he uh, he rest in the uh, in in uh, our Lord's hand. But uh, you know, from his transition, I saw a man of worry without a peace, and he found a peace in Christ, and he realized that the life is not that important. If I mean the on earth is not that important if you are in Christ, that's why he decided to move back to China because he 
he's not like saying, okay, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to live longer. He, his mission changed. His mission changed from living to spreading the word to be the peacemaker. Next slide, Philip. So, we are, we Christians are the peacemakers. Because we have received the grace of God, we have received the life of God. So we want to, you know, make peace for those uh, uh, lost souls. So uh, in the Second uh, Corinthians five eighteen, long all things are God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So it is our mission to be the peacemaker, like Jesus Christ, to spread the gospel, to tell the news, good news, to bring the peace to this world. And I don't have time to, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, third one, for these two, but uh, I think uh, the most important message I've already delivered, Jesus Christ is the peacemaker. Um, and with Jesus Christ, we can be peacemakers to bring peace in this world, through gospel, in Jesus Christ. And we can be the peacemakers among the people. Okay. So in the, uh, Colossians 3.13, it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. We are the peacemakers. Many times we think that we are the peacemakers because uh, you know, we are as the, uh, you know, kind of, uh, the middle man Okay, to reconcil uh, co reconciliate two fighting parties. Many times we forget that we are the fighting party. Okay, we are the troublemaker. We are the party that is fighting. So, you know, that's why Colossians said that we need to forgive others. We need to be the peacemaker. We need to make peace with others because our Lord has forgiven us. How Jesus Christ has died for us, and He has made the peace for us with our eternal Heavenly Father. And today is uh, some um, on Palm Sunday, and uh, we pray that all the nations can open their heart to accept to receive Jesus Christ as the peacemaker to bring the internal peace in this world. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, you haven't given your begotten only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so that we can, we receive them, we receive him, and he gave us the uh, right to be the children of God. Lord uh, Jesus, we thank you because of your precious blood, we can come to our Lord and we can come to our Lord freely to worship because we are free in you. Lord, we pray that you have mercy on us, not you are strength on us. You make us the peacemakers to spread the gospel, not strengthen us. Give us your wisdom, give us your strength above all give us your love so that we can bring peace in you through you in this world lord we thank you praying our lord jesus christ's name amen